Hey guys, Dev back with Crime Hive, and we're going to discuss some a couple murders here that happened in Washington State not too long ago, and we're going to talk about if they're possibly related. If they're not, we still may have a killer out there, a uh, possible serial killer, and, and so we're going to talk about that. And before I do, again, this is Dev with Crime Hive. If you like these kind of true crime videos, subscribe to my channel. You can hit that bell notification for more updates as I go through more, more cases and stories. So we're, we're discussing here a couple, a couple murders here in Washington State recently. And this first one here, this is 40-year-old Nathan Loring, and this is in Aberdeen area. So uh, re his remains, uh, the, the body of this man was found in a remote area area of um, tulips if that's how you say it and there's to to this day we do not know who may be involved so there's there's potentially a suspect still out there uh, there could be more bodies we don't know right now it could be a serial killer and the reason i'm bringing this story up because this is very fresh this is very new there's going to be more details coming out about this case later on uh, but i'm curious because there was another murder that took place not too long ago this one was actually solved uh, this is uh, Ian Eccles. He was missing to, to this day. His body has not been recovered, uh, but evidence was, was gathered by investigators. And this is also in Washington State. Uh, they actually arrested this, this man right here. Let's see if I can get a better image here. Um, his name was Jorge or George Al Alcantara Gonzalez. And, and so he um, evaded law enforcement deputies for 23 days. And that's another part we're going to talk about at the end are these survivalist type fugitives that have, have been able to evade capture from law enforcement for, for years, sometimes years at a time. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. But what's interesting here is uh, police gathered enough evidence to, to determine that he murdered Ian Eccles and he was arrested. Uh, the area is not too far away. It's, it's about three hours. So I'm going to minimize this here so that the two murders both take place in Washington State. This one's in the Aberdeen area. Uh, the one where Jorge was arrested uh, was about three hours away in Liberty, Washington. So this is in Kittitas County, Kittitas County uh, mountainous area. And then you got another rural mountainous area over here near Aberdeen. Uh, just to give you perspective, Seattle's right here. Uh, you got Olympia, and then, so it's about three hours away. Possibly related, don't know yet. It's still pretty early on with these investigations, but I think it's important to, to, to bring it up. If you guys have more information, if you happen to be in that area, um, certainly uh, contact authorities because these are, these, are, these are still fresh cases. So um, if you guys don't know, this one uh, still unsolved. Again, we've got uh, what happened with this story was uh, Ian Eccles here was was actually he was he's a hunter he was actually going to meet up with some friends and he just went missing just vanished uh, didn't show up for work people called in they were or called police because they were concerned and he uh had a vehicle this vehicle right here this toyota and people saw another person driving his vehicle so uh, they started connecting the dots and then they actually found this vehicle dumped and i and i believe forensics um, investigators found enough evidence, forensic evidence, to determine that he was murdered. So even though his body hasn't been found, they have evidence to believe that he was murdered. They just haven't found his body yet. So uh, really, really crazy story there. Uh, but this man here that was arrested for it, um, he uh, had, had potentially stolen two vehicles, was supposedly in Ian Eccles' vehicle, and had been burglarizing homes in the area. So he was like basically surviving off the land, living off the land. He was staying in abandoned homes and cabins in the area. He was burglarizing, stealing, and he, uh, th this was apparently the largest manhunt in Kittitas County ever. So 23 days it stretched. Even with all the high-tech equipment that's used nowadays, it's interesting that he was able to evade him for so long. So that's the other point, point I wanted to bring up uh, is, is the survivalists. And I, I found another article here. This is just really interesting here if you guys might be familiar with some of these other cases uh, some of these are a little bit older but what we have a uh, this to give you an idea of some of these these older cases you've got convicted murder uh, eric rudolph who famously invaded authorities for five years while hiding out in the north carolina mountains so 
really crazy, five years. And, and, and so you've got another, uh, we're talking about this one here, Eric Frein. He um, had gunned down some, some Pennsylvania state troopers, I believe. And um, he was a survivalist, knew how to live off the land, um, and was able to invade them for, for some time, for, for years too. So this is a picture of him. Um, and then there's other cases this article talks about, article talks about and I'm going to show a little video and we're just going to kind of talk about that and then we'll wrap up this video. But uh, you've got another one here, uh, Troy James Knapp. And so I'm just giving you these as some examples. You guys can look up some of these cases on your own as well. He was known as the Mountain Man and was literally in the woods in Utah on the run for six years and he was sleeping in a tent and killing wild animals for food. So uh, this is, if you guys are familiar with Rambo, you know, you got Sylvester Stallone playing Rambo. It's, it, these are kind of like Rambo type stories here where these people, these um, suspects are hiding out in the woods and they're able to evade capture because some of these areas are just so dense and it's so hard, even with aerial helicopters, dogs, you name it. Sometimes it's really challenging for for investigators to find these suspects. It can take years, as we've seen in these cases. So uh, I would take a look at some of these these articles here. It's 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 pretty fascinating, really interesting stuff. Robert Fisher is another one. Uh, you know, these people are considered survivalists and you know skilled hunters, outdoorsmen. And so that's what I'm gonna I'm gonna play this little video here. I think this will give a good uh, kind of perspective on it, and and then we'll just take a look at that and discuss that as we go. We can get this in large. 500 here if I police can. officers from four states, the FBI, and the Navajo Nation to find two heavily armed men they have been pursuing for more than a month. The fugitives are wanted for killing a policeman. It is believed that the men are still in the area, referred to as the Four Corners, where Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah come together. It is the same hostile terrain where Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid successfully hid from the law at the turn of the century. Emphasis on hostile territory. ABC's Judy Muller recently joined the manhunt for long enough to know that the men they are looking for have an edge. ABC article May discusses this. Near Cortez, Colorado. Police officer Dale Claxton is mowed down by automatic weapons fire after pulling over three men in a stolen water truck. Police give chase but find themselves outgunned. It's pretty hard to stop an automatic weapon with a, with a pistol. I don't think there's anything we could have done. The fugitives, so-called survivalists who know... So that's interesting here. Uh, some of these people, too, that are evading law enforcement, they're using some pretty high-tech uh, gear, weapon weapons, and um, they've got plenty of ammo, and, and they just they know how to live off this land. So, uh, you know, you, you do have officers nowadays equipped with more long guns, shotguns, rifles, that sort of stuff. But uh, if you guys remember some of those other cases with bank robberies, uh, back in California, some of those famous ones there where they were wearing body armor and they had long guns and they were just outgunning police. Police just couldn't deal with the situation. I mean, it was it was a chaotic scene. And maybe I'll pull up that video or link that below just to give you guys an idea. So, uh, so you, you've got that going on, and then we'll just continue. We'll kind of discuss a little bit. It's not too long of a video. Country well, escape on foot. The next sighting six days later outside Bluff, Utah. Suspect Robert Mason holed up along the San Juan River shoots at a deputy and is later found dead of a self-inflicted gunshot. Hundreds of officers join in the search for the two others, Alan Monty Pylon and Jason McBean. Despite high-tech surveillance from the air and skilled Navajo trackers on the ground, the trail goes cold. Then, three weeks later in... So that's interesting. You've got Navajo people, uh, they, they, they're experts on tracking and they still can't seem to figure out where some of these fugitives are. Uh, really interesting, and, and they're going to discuss some of the things that they did to evade capture. So I, I just I feel like it's a really interesting video. Uh, you know, it, again, pretty uh, pretty crazy that they can they can go that long. The town of Montezuma Creek. Avoiding detection. A Navajo girl spots the two men lurking around a water truck in this area, and the search is on again. Temperatures on the desert floor reach 110 degrees, burning the paws of search dogs, which are already having a tough time tracking the suspects they're doing is going back and forth into the river and our dogs and that are losing the scent once they go into the river. There are bound to be people who say, well, how in the world could they have been in that same area, that same river area, all this time and not be found? Well, what you need to do is go back here a few miles, go off towards the river there and take some pictures of that and you can see how thick it is. And so we did. The San Juan River is lined for miles and miles with heavy brush along. 
So some of these wooded areas, as they're showing it here, it's just so dense. It's so difficult for um, anybody to navigate through there, especially if you're looking for someone. So one of the things they did that we just saw was they were um, they were you know they were traveling through these riverbeds. Uh, dogs can't track that uh, if they're going through these riverbeds and then they're hopping on rocks and and uh, and we're going to see more of what they did. But it's it, it's uh, this is a way you can see it's so challenging and that. And the reason I'm showing this, I want to give you perspective on the, the case that I just mentioned where Jorge was captured. I mean, he evaded him for 23 days. So uh, he, he was potentially doing similar things uh, to, to evade capture as well. So I just want to give you guys a good idea, a, good, a better visual of all this. On both banks, thick willow and tamarisk trees, Russian olives with sharp thorns, brush so dense that you almost can't see a person until you're nearly on top of them. In an effort to level the playing field, deputies set fire to several miles of brush. Wow. But that fails to flush out the suspect. Even set fire. Again suspended. Couldn't capture so them. how long can these fugitives hmm. hide out in this rough terrain? It's incredibly easy to hide, and especially if you have preparation time. Throughout history, these canyons have served as hideouts for outlaws. Historian and guide Fred Blackburn says McBean and Pylon most likely know how to purify water and find food. Edible hmm. plants can be found along small streams that feed the river. Just interesting. So they're, they, they're literally finding food off the land, killing animals, uh, purifying water. I mean, they're, they're essentially camping, uh, but, but also surviving at the same time. And, it, and they bring up a couple other important topics here. And this video is almost over, but I just uh, I thought it was really interesting That's for you guys. All. Let me Excuse know what you guys me. think about this video. It's a little saying? older. Excellent. They're just little lobsters, as you can see right here. The fugitives may hide their tracks by moving in the river at night and then before daybreak walking on rocks up the canyon rim just into talked cool about that. caves hidden from view. As we step into the shade, we lose 10 to 20 degrees. It cools off for us. A pack rat nest provides a perfect spot for setting traps so the men would never have to fire a gun to kill their food. The rodent hits that snare and chokes to death. There's no noise. And Snaring got animals. This hideout, which is Rambo almost type impossible stuff to here. see until you're in front of it, was used for months by a man wanted for murder. Blackburn says these places give fugitives an advantage because they can see and hear their pursuers approach. They're going to know what sounds are out here from the birds and that kind of thing. When those sounds stop or you've got a warning call from a bird, uh, the noise of the helicopters, all of that kind of stuff, they're going to hear you coming. The man who lived in this cave eventually gave himself up. How long could Pylon and McVean hold out? The only thing that would keep you... Uh, out of here is this if, is interesting. if you miss people so bad you had to go back. You could stay here as long as you want. In other words, the pursued have a distinct advantage over the pursuers. Really interesting. So uh, this guy is basically saying that he was kind of a guide expert in wilderness uh, survival and that sort of stuff. Um, talks about, you know, hey, these people could, you know, basically live out here as long as they want until they decide to give up or, you know, maybe they run out of resources. But it seems like some of these people can continue to utilize their resources as long as they want, as long as they don't want to be around people and they want to survive out the land. I mean, they, they could essentially avoid capture for, uh, you know, as we've seen several years. So just wanted to play that. Let me know your guys' thoughts on that. Um, anyway, I'll still continue to give developments on this case as we continue through, because again, this one not solved. Uh, it's, it's still a, a very fresh open case. I just wanted to see if there was a similarity to the other case, seeing if you guys were even familiar with these. And uh, let me know your thoughts below. Comment, let me know. And again, this is Dev with Crime Hive. I'll be back with another video soon. You guys take care.